West Ham's academy has a long and distinguished history to the days of England's World Cup victory in 1966. Bobby Moore, captain of that side, played alongside scorers in the final Martin Peters and Jeff Hurst. The likes of Trevor Brookin and Frank Lampard Sr. also came through the academy ranks, and they won the 1975 FA Cup final. The next generation of West Ham stars made themselves known at the FA Youth Cup finals in the 1990s. They would lose to Liverpool in 96 with Frank Lampard Jr. and Rio Ferdinand in the team, but won in 1999 against Coventry with Joe Cole and Michael Carrick featuring. Manager Harry Redknapp had the future at his fingertips. Just a shame that John Terry slipped through the cracks of the West Ham Academy in 1995, moving to Chelsea at the age of 14. All of the aforementioned names had played in the Champions League final by the year 2008, and that's without mentioning Glenn Johnson and Jermaine Defoe who have both had successful international careers in their own right. Meanwhile West Ham were relegated, having already lost Rio Ferdinand and Frank Lampard. Joe Cole and Glenn Johnson joined John Terry at Chelsea upon Hammers relegation. Michael Carrick, the last to leave the club following Jermaine Defoe's departure partway through the first season in the second tier, stated, It is frustrating to me when I see the quality of players who have left the club in the last six or seven months. It is weird for me now because the whole club seems different. West Ham have yet to return to the heights of fifth place in Harry Redknapp's seven years at Upton Park. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly, and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... West Ham kept their academy stars from the turn of the millennium. The year was 1995 and John Terry, a fixture of West Ham's academy, sticks to his guns and continues his career at Upton Park. A year later, Terry would partner Ferdinand in an FA Youth Cup winning side prevailing 1-0 over Liverpool over two legs. We rejoin the likes of Rio Ferdinand, Frank Lampard and John Terry in the summer of 2000 alongside the winners of the 1999 FA Youth Cup final, Michael Carrick and Joe Cole. After a quarter-final exit to Leeds in the UEFA Cup and a third successive top half finish in the league, Harry Redknapp began to implement the likes of Carrick, Cole and Defoe. Constant offers from Manchester United, Leeds and Chelsea for the young stars are constantly rebuffed by Redknapp. And with a 7th place finish in 2001, West Ham just miss out on European football. The Sharks circle the waters for another summer, but with Redknapp still in charge, the offers are refused. Soon the likes of Steve Lomas, Stuart Pearce and Trevor Sinclair would be gone in favour of the academy graduates. Redknapp had solidified the new contracts of Ferdinand Terry and Lampard, with the promise of European football. The goal realised in the spring of 2002 with 6th place in the league. And European football meant bigger names joining the club. Robbie Keane, Richard Wright, Joseph Yobo and even JJ Koch on a free from PSG. The 2002-03 season was to be a marquee year for the Hammers, and at the end of it, they had a very real chance of their first piece of silverware for 23 years. No, not the UEFA Cup, they fell to Celtic at the round of 32 stage, but first they had the promise of Champions League football to fight for. They sat far through a trip to Birmingham to come, whilst 5th and 6th place Chelsea and Liverpool duked it out at Stamford Bridge, bottom feeders, should the carcass of West Ham fall down at St Andrews. And it did. By the time Steven Gerrard confirmed a win for Liverpool at the bridge, the Hammers were 2-0 up, but they bottled it. Jeff Horsfield and Stern John with the blue goals in Birmingham to confirm Liverpool's place in the Champions League, whilst Chelsea and West Ham fell to the UEFA Cup. The consolation prize was six days later. West Ham's belief had grown throughout the season that they could achieve something. This was compounded by the fact that they put Manchester United out of the FA Cup again at Old Trafford. Arsenal were beaten the following round at Upton Park whilst they toppled Chelsea after a replay in the quarter-finals. And just like that, West Ham were suddenly favourites for the Cup. Robbie Keane netted twice in the semi-final win at Old Trafford over Sheffield United before he got his 29th and most important one at Cardiff, the FA Cup final winner. The piece of silverware in close proximity of the Champions League kicked the can of players wanting out of the club further down the road. Redknapp knew he had 12 months to secure Champions League football before the spine of his team deserted him. Now in the age of Wenger's invincibles followed by Mourinho's double and finally Ferguson's incredible rejuvenation, West Ham would never come close to the league title, but they definitely had a chance at breaking that top four. The names of Damien Duff and Mieta Kesman followed and 12 months later, although their season would end in defeat, it would be to Rafa Benitez of Valencia in the UEFA Cup final. But West Ham's academy graduates were approaching their peak and they finally reached the apex of football in Europe. Their 67 points was enough to comfortably qualify for the Champions League ahead of Liverpool, who had just 60 points to their name. The core of the side stayed and West Ham were to play in the Champions League. After recording home and away wins over Deportivo and beating Monaco and Olympiacos in East London, West Ham confirmed top spot and a more favourable knockout game. West Ham didn't ship a goal to either PSV in the last 16 or Lyon in the quarter-finals, and whilst they managed to beat AC Milan 1-0 in a Champions League semi-final second leg back at Upton Park, it wasn't enough. Milan's 2-0 win back in Italy was enough to see them through, where they would beat Juventus in a repeat of the 2003 final. West Ham's route to being an established Champions League club was set in motion thanks to another low points tally from a Liverpool club. This time West Ham usurped Everton's 61 points with a few matches to spare to confirm another Champions League campaign. 
The knockout stage in 2006 meant a daunting trip to the Bernabeu in the round of 16, made even more daunting with a goalless draw at Upton Park in the first leg. It would be Harry Redknapp's best night under the European lights with West Ham. Perhaps the players were buoyed by the need to give Harry Redknapp one last run at the European Cup. In between the two legs, Redknapp had announced he would step down as West Ham manager, courted by England as Sven Goran Eriksson's successor after the 2006 World Cup. A man pivotal to England in that tournament earned West Ham a shock win on away goals, John Terry with the header after extra time in the Bernabeu. And despite their exit to Juventus in the quarter-finals, Redknapp would go out on a high. There was no silverware to be had, and West Ham weren't even in the top four going into the final day of the Premier League season, but the sweetest moment was to come. Needing a win to leapfrog Spurs into fourth, West Ham thrashed their London rivals 5-0, with four coming from Jermaine Defoe and a little assistance coming from a dodgy lasagna. Redknapp bowed out recording his highest finish of third at Upton Park after 12 years at the club. He would change England's fortunes too. He took them to the semis of Euro 2008 and the World Cup in South Africa as well as the Euro 2012 final, losing to Spain on all three occasions. West Ham had also developed a tag of nearly men. New manager Rafael Benitez had translated his success with Valencia onto Upton Park with the FA Cup in his first season, thanks to the additions of Xabi Alonso, Luis Garcia and Javier Mascherano. West Ham would enjoy a first Champions League final in 2007, but lost to AC Milan in the final. Rafa would leave Upton Park in 2012 after a failure to qualify for the Champions League for the first time in almost a decade, the core of their team moving on almost immediately in the aftermath. West Ham, obvious winners, a Champions League final and two FA Cup titles, not bad for West Ham. Barcelona, also winners, with Manchester United and Chelsea depleted in 2008 thanks to their inability to poach West Ham talent, Barcelona would win three Champions Leagues in four years between 2008 and 2011. Is this the alternative universe you expected? Please let us know in the comments section if you have any suggestions for a future scenario. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash a like on the video and subscribe to What If Football for more alternate football universes.